Hey, this is Ming here, speech therapist from agentsofspeech.com. Today, we want to talk about virtual autism, okay? Why it's actually dangerous to have your child watch something on uh, the phone or tablet for extended period of time. So, uh, you know, we've been getting a lot of inquiries through our DMs, emails, talking about, oh, my kid can uh, say one to like five count from like one to 20 or whatever. Uh, they can say the ABCs, no animal names, whatever, a lot of stuff, uh, but they won't communicate. Well, most of the time is because of that they're not getting enough language stimulation or learning how to interact from you. And this constitutes to virtual autism. It's a term coined by a Romanian clinical psychologist. I'm not going to try to say her name. <laughs> it's too hard. How real is this? We don't know at this moment in time. We're still starting to see the effects of screen time on young children. This, I think, really constitutes towards how we diagnose autism traditionally is that we tick the boxes. Or they have these ones. They're at risk, right? And having virtual autism or a lot of screen time without the parental uh, engagement that our generation might have a lot more is creating autism like symptoms that actually constitutes towards the diagnosis, the huge spike in recent years that, oh, maybe before it was one in 50 something and now it's one in 20 something, uh, especially in the USA, you can see a huge spike due to the, the ability to diagnose and uh, to identify children at a younger age. I, we have uh, a question yeah, from our absolutely. audience, for our professionals, okay? Yeah. Um, <laughs> do the professionals here believe that some kids that are told they have autism actually suffer from parents keeping them secluded by not letting them interact with other kids or just by having them tablets and allowing them to watch YouTube all day? There's one more portion to that before... Um, and it says, I know a parent who didn't want her son to learn anything, so he would stay reliant on her. She felt it would keep him from leaving home when he got older. I do a lot of formal research, like peer-reviewed research, plus research with people who are talking about things in this space. And a lot of what I've seen over the past year, individuals who are diagnosed on the spectrum with that's that issue. Parents are getting checks for mm -hmm. children. Parents get Sometimes it is the people like to live. I'm trying to find the word. People like to live in a pity. And when you have a child who's on the spectrum, living in the space where it's a woe is me mm -hmm. affords them some kind of attention that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so I've heard a lot of neurodivergent and uh, individuals diagnosed on the spectrum saying, I'm coming of age or I am of age and I can't get out from up under my parents. They mm -hmm. won't let me even because they right. want the money or they want some kind of touchy feely, woe is me thing related to their kid. And some people are just control. They just have an issue with control. Let's not negate that fact. And the individual feels like that they can have this level of freedom because they can do all of these things that are called daily activities of living that any average person can do or neurotypical person can do, mm -hmm. but the parent won't give them that freedom to right. be able to do that. Right. And it goes back to, again, in the home, how are you taught and where does that come from that we are actually not the burden for mm -hmm. our children and our loved ones who are on the spectrum? And we really work with them to what is freedom. And sometimes it is just that people fear what is out there and how or parents fear what is out there and people not understanding their children. So they also are afraid from that aspect to let their children grow grow and go and allow them to be self-sufficient and self-reliant in the way that they best can. It really is unfortunate. I get paperwork that parents ask me to fill out for SSI. And mm -hmm. I literally had to tell parents, hey, I'm not going to lie for you. Your child does not have what you're saying. Wow. But that's not your job. You can't do that anyway, though, right? I cannot do it. And I, unfortunately, because parents, now, wow. does, it, does their parent, ha does their child have some, some things they need supported? A hundred percent. Is it autism? No, it's not autism. And I'm not going to tell these people on this paper that it's autism because you went to a doctor and said, hey, well, they 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 really like uh, they really like cars. What if I have a, a lot of babies like things when they're five. Right. They, they, they love Paw Patrol. They want everything to be Paw Patrol. Yeah. A lot of a lot of babies want everything to be Paw Patrol mm -hmm. right. on the spectrum because of that. And they're going to doctors who don't know what's going on with their child. And it's easier. In the 90s, all the babies were diagnosed with ADHD. That was the yeah, new thing. Everything, yeah. And so if your child had a little extra energy on them and you, you didn't know how to get them to sit down or whatever, 
throw every baby on Ridland. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. in 2000s, we're true. seeing, I mean, exponential increases of the number of identifications yeah. on the spectrum. Yeah. I know when I started just eight years ago, specifically working with children on a spectrum in the education setting, it was, I think, 40% or something identifications. Now it's like 60 to 70%. Mm. Like it's ridiculous. Every year it goes up. And it seems to be the easier thing to do, identify a child on the spectrum when you don't know what's going on with them. And I literally will have to tell parents, I am not going to make up deficits for your child that do not exist. I can't do it. And I'm not going to limit your child like that. And you shouldn't want to limit your child like that. Yes, right. do they need some supports? Absolutely. And I'm sorry that the system is set up that they only can support a certain type of thing in a certain type of way. I am sorry. It shouldn't be like that. Mm. I'm not going to lie for you and I'm not going to limit your child. I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. but I am going to work with you. Like she said, with that, be a part of your village to find mm -hmm. out how to best support your child. I will 100% do that because I want your child to have the best and I want your child to be the best. So I'm going to figure it out. We're going to work on this thing together. We're going to process of elimination. We're going to just keep mm -hmm. on trying. But what we're mm -hmm. not going to do is keep on lying. That's what we're not going to do. Okay.